Welcome to the Project Management Prepcast, the direct route to PMP exam success. Here's your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. Hello and welcome back to the PM Prepcast, where we develop you into a PMP. I'm your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. In this lesson, we look at the develop project team process. While a lot of project managers like to focus on the product itself, outstanding project managers focus on the team first. By developing an excellent project team, you will develop an excellent product. We look at ground rules, soft skills, interpersonal skills, as well as team building activities you can use to develop such an excellent product project team. So we will cover in detail why develop project team is an essential process for you as a project manager to perform. We discuss the hard work that goes into creating a truly outstanding project team. Training and team building is discussed and why it is so important for your project. We also cover soft or interpersonal skills that a good project manager can and should develop. We talk about team building activities and some best practices for building an effective team. We discuss formal and informal training as well as doing a review of team assessments and rewards. It's a relatively large process, so we cut it up into two parts. In part one right now, you'll see our overview, the inputs, some tools and techniques. Then in part two, we'll continue with the tools and techniques, look at the outputs and give you our review. In the official words of the PMBOK guide, the knowledge area of project human resources management includes the processes that organize, manage and lead your project team. This means that in this process, the PMBOK guide will give you all of the processes that enable you as a project manager to best organize your resources, manage the resources and make them efficient and then of course course also lead the project team and for that it gives us four processes. The process that is the main focus of this lesson is develop project team but a few things have to happen before we get there because as with every knowledge area the first thing we want to do is we want to go into the planning mode in the plan human resource management process. The process of identifying and documenting project roles, responsibilities, required skills, reporting relationships and creating a staffing management plan. In order for us to be able to develop the project team, well, we first have to have a project team. That's what the second process is all about. Acquire project team. The process of confirming human resource availability and obtaining the team necessary to complete project activities. Now that we have the team, we can develop the project team. This is the process of improving competencies, team member interaction and overall team environment to enhance project performance. But we not only need to develop the project team, we also have to manage our project team. This is the process of tracking team member performance, providing feedback, resolving issues and managing team changes to optimize project performance. This knowledge area is pretty straightforward when it comes to the process groups into which our four processes fall. The first one, Plan Human Resource Management, is a planning process group. And then the next three, including Develop Project Team, they're all part of the executing process group. The main concept that you have to understand is that by develop, we not only mean training of individuals, we also mean team building. Yes, you definitely want to train your people and improve their skills as individuals. But even if you have the greatest specialists on your project, if you are unable to bring them together as a team, well, then they will not perform for you. So you need to focus on team building as well. By implementing proper training and team building techniques, you will create an atmosphere for success. 
The develop project team process is often an area that gets overlooked by many project managers. It's one of those touchy feely things that many of us project managers are just not all that comfortable with. You have to step a bit outside of your comfort zone and you have to develop and use those soft skills in order to succeed. But once you are starting out a project with a team building activity and then continue during the project, you will notice a great increase in team coherence and team trust. Bringing croissants or donuts for breakfast or occasionally holding your team meeting outside in the sunshine is a small form of team building. You don't have to look too far to find things of bringing your team together. So let me begin by making this one important statement here that is essential for team building. You should start team building early on your project and you should continue team building activities throughout the project life cycle. But to tell you the truth, team building really begins before the project even starts. So let me give you seven steps you can follow to bring an outstanding team together. First of all, you want to attract the right team members. Strong team builders realize that they are not only looking for potential team members who have specialized skills and talents, but they also need to assess the fit of those possible team members within the team as a whole. Then you want to promote innovation. When you encourage a pioneering approach within your team, you will gain value beyond expectation. When a team member's ideas are valued, their willingness to believe in that team naturally rises accordingly. You want to also assign and delegate meaningful work. Team members have a need to experience work that challenges them and brings meaning to their tasks that they are working on independently of outside influence. You also want to offer variety. It's just boring to work on the same thing or with the same person day in and day out. And at the same time, you need to allow independence. Every member of the team needs to know that their ideas and opinions will be respected. As an invested decision maker, each team member is more likely to feel like they are valued. They are a valued contributor who is accountable to the team and to the company. And you want to communicate the vision. It's essential that all team members are committed to the same goals and vision of your project and that they have complementary methods of achieving them. Last but not least, you need to be trustworthy. If you want to gain the trust of your team, you must earn it. These things help each team member see their value to the project as a whole. Here is figure 9-9 from the PMBOK guide, the overview of the inputs, tools, techniques and outputs. And what you can immediately see is that you only have three inputs to this process and two outputs, but there are a lot more tools and techniques. Let's take a look at everything here in detail. So we have three inputs to the process and we're just going to review them right here on this slide. There are not going to be any more detailed reviews after this. First of all, we have the human resources management plan. Why do you need the human resources management plan as an input? Well, this plan defines team management approaches that you can employ. Let's say that you would like to do a team building exercise that includes a stay in a hotel. Then the human resource management plan will tell you if that is possible. It will also tell you what your strategies uh, for training are with your team. Will you send your team members away to individual seminars or will you bring the trainers on site so that everyone participates? That kind of information is defined in the plan. Our second input are the project staff assignments. Why do you need these? Well, first of all, you want to identify the people who are assigned to the project and know 
who they are. And knowing the team is the first step to developing it. By knowing who they are and what their functions or assignments are, you can do an initial assessment to see what kind of team development is necessary. And then lastly, we have the resource calendars. And the reason why we have these as inputs is they contain resource availability. By looking at the calendars, you know when to schedule a team building event or a training session. Participation is key. And if your people aren't available, well, they can't participate. And so we are already moving on to the tools and techniques of this process here. We have the interpersonal skills as well as training. These two tools and techniques are going to be the focus for the rest of part one here. And then in part two, we're going to get into the others. We have team building activities, ground rules, co-location, recognition and rewards, as well as personnel assessment tools. Once again, I'd like to emphasize that starting this process early and keeping it going throughout the project lifecycle is not only very helpful for the project success, but also for your PMP exam success. I have seen questions about this very item, starting it early, keep it going on the commercially available exam simulators. I said earlier that this process can be a bit touchy feely. And here's something along those lines to you. You will have to use your interpersonal or soft skills in the develop project team process. If you understand what makes your team tick, if you know their sentiments, if you try to anticipate their reactions, and if you make sure that you acknowledge their concerns and help them if they have any issues, then you are applying what is known as your interpersonal or soft skills. On the next two slides, we're going to take a look at some key concepts in regards to these touchy feely soft skills. They're in no particular order. The goal is to give you just a, a list, an overview, an idea of how diverse these can be. So some of these interpersonal skills include communication, which means they, it has to be both timely and Clear. You have to have empathy, meaning you have to understand the other people's point of view. You have to be able to influence. You have to help people want to get things done. Creativity is required by letting people be creative without giving boundaries. You have to be honest in all communication, relationships and activities. You have to be able to motivate people by communicating their personal value proposition of doing the work. You have to keep eye contact, constantly maintaining it to show respect and show interest as well. But of course, without making it go all creepy and make it turn into a staring contest there. And you have to foster dependability, having team members work together and foster dependability and accountability. Time management is also part of this. You need to wisely manage both your own time and other people's time. You have to encourage self-confidence by supporting people in the decisions that they make. You have to be able to delegate tasks when necessary in order to build confidence and strengthen the team. You have to involve mentors in this. You have to have more senior team members or yourself in terms of experience help along the more junior team members and bring them up and improve their skills. Coaching is part of this as well, showing people the right way to performing a task. You have to guide people, showing people how to perform a task, but not doing it for them. You also have to be able to give direction, steering team members in the right direction when they go astray. And of course, there has to be effective involvement. You need to be involved with your team as a manager, as a peer, as a leader when necessary. All of these fall under the interpersonal skills category and they can be highly effective tools to develop your team. 
So why are interpersonal skills so important to the success of you as a project manager? Interpersonal skills are the ability to establish and maintain relationships with other people. The term interpersonal skills is used often in business contexts to refer to the measure of a person's ability to operate within business organizations through social communication and interactions. Let me emphasize that for us project managers, these skills are really, really important. Having good interpersonal skills increases the productivity on the project since the number of conflicts may be reduced. In informal situations, they allow communication to be comfortable and easy. Project managers with good interpersonal skills, they can generally control their own feelings as well as guide other people's feelings that emerge during difficult situations and respond appropriately instead of being overwhelmed by emotions. Next, let me give you a solid, a hard tool and technique for this process training. But by training, we are not just talking about sending someone to a seminar, which is what we know as formal training. There is more to training than just that. There is also informal training. Informal training and development is rather casual and incidental. Typically, there are no specified training goals as such, nor are there any ways to evaluate if the training, the informal training, actually accomplished anything or not. This type of training and development occurs so naturally that many people probably aren't even aware that they are currently in a training experience at all. Some examples of informal training are on-the-job training, which is probably the most prominent form. Mentoring and coaching are closely related to this as well. Informal discussions among employees about a certain topic, book discussion groups, uh, reading newspapers and journal articles about a specific topic there. And then a more recent approach is sending employees to hear very prominent speakers. Some sometimes affectionately called the parade of stars. A previous employer of mine had what we called a lunch and learn presentation. Someone from our division or another division would give a presentation over lunch. So we would just sit in the large conference room, eat our sandwiches and listen to the presentation. It's a lunch and learn. Well, and formal training is, of course, the opposite of what we have just seen. It is based on some standard structure or process. The methods and means of evaluation might closely be associated with the learning objectives, or they might not. For example, courses, seminars and workshops, they often have a structure. But it's arguable whether or not their training methods and evaluation methods actually assess whether the objective have been met or not. Formal training would be planned and executed in roughly three steps. First of all, declaring certain learning objectives or an extent of knowledge, skills or abilities that would be reached or should be reached by the learners at the end of the training to focus your training on a specific subject. Then we use a variety of learning methods to reach the objectives depending on the way that the attendees learn. And last but not least, we're then applying some kind of evaluation activities at the end of the training. Here on the project management prep cost, for example, we have self-assessment tests that we give to you and you are able to answer about 15 questions or so with every module. And of course, at the end of our video workshop here, in order for you to receive your formal certificate, you have to pass our final exam. And here is just a brief overview of some formal training methods that can be applied. Of course, there could be classroom training. This could be one on one, one teacher, one student or one teacher teaching a group. It could be computer based training, which can be as simple as training videos or more elaborate solutions. You could have online or web based training, also known as distance learning, uh, such as visual hands on programs that include online tutorials and training methods. There could be 
passive training, which basically means reading about something. And there is self-directed learning, which you are doing at the moment. It's sort of a combination on the of the web-based training with self-directed learning, what you are doing here on the Project Management Prepcast. I just have a few more remarks about training and then we will have reached the end of part one of this lesson. The important thing to realize about training is that you not necessarily just train your people in the technical project skills, but also in management skills. If your project is large enough, then you will likely have a training budget for your staff specifically for the purpose of training people to move the project forward and to a successful conclusion. Oh, and before we move on from training, let's go back to the human resources management plan, because guess what? It is in the human resource management plan where you outlined your training approaches that you should, of course, take into consideration as you are deciding upon who goes where into what type of training. But if during the course of the project you are observing a need for training, then an unplanned training, of course, has to be scheduled as well. And this concludes part one on our look at develop project team. So Justine and I say goodbye. See you later, alligator. Until next time.